Close to the edge. Yeah. Then I can go home early. Uh, I think you're on now, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the beauty of God. Amen. Amen. Wherever we are, it's the house of God. Look at Banky walking right in front of the altar. To all who, is, who are tuned in on Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you. If you're tuned in for the first time, we welcome you. If you're tuned in for the 1100th time, we welcome you. Amen. I pray that you've had a safe week and God have blessed you and inspire you way deep down inside and give you all that you need to survive and keep on making it. Aren't you glad you're here this morning? Amen. 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 that Sunday school is on um, at 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 12.30 and 2. Sunday school, 12.30 and 2. Are you ready for praise and worship? Yeah. Are you ready for praise and worship? Yeah. Let me hear. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Somebody say Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning on my way, and I kept the phone kept ringing. <laughs> Folks are saying, well, "Are we going to have service today?" And seriously, if trustees didn't say cancel, I wasn't canceling. Amen. But it wasn't up to trustees to cancel this morning because God was in control. Amen? God was in control. And when we established that we would have service outside, one of the things we did was we had a transmitter that was um, also part of our outdoors program. So if you come and it begin to, showers begin to come, you could stay in your car, or you could go back home. You could stay in your car and hear the entire service. Amen? Amen? Just tune in. You didn't have to come and sit in the rain or the wet grass, but you could tune in or you could catch us later. Amen? Amen. Yesterday, um, we had an activity and the sanctuary just was not appropriate for us to go in. And I am not taking risks, any kind of risk, with any of us. I love you all too much. And God loves you too much for us to do that. So we give God thanks and praise that he's allowed us to do what we do at First Church. Amen. That we're not lagging behind God. That we keep in right in step with Jesus Christ. Praise God. And that we're able by his grace to continue his work. Thank you so much for praise and worship. And now the Old Testament and then the reading of the New Testament lessons. The scripture from the Old Testament this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, following the story of the Israelites' travel through the wilderness. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Moses said to them, why do you, the, the people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Good morning. The gospel will be coming from Matthew. Please stand as you are able here and at home. For those that are in your cars, open your hearts now to the reading of Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued one with another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, 
we are afraid of the cloud, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And those who will be um, taking the offering, we ask you to come forth. Church. Good morning. Father, we come to you this morning. We give you thanks for the sun that's rising on us. We give you thanks for all the blessings that you've poured out on us throughout this week. And right now, Lord, we give back a portion of what you give to us. I ask that you bless it for the work of this church.
again and can we hum it together yes. can we just hum that yeah just the chorus
I am so happy to see the children. Amen. Yes. My sister makes sure she goes around and not only bring her children, but she makes sure she get the other some of the other children too. Amen. 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 That's such a blessing. And I see I saw Sister Betty. Last week she um, sent us some money to help with lunch. Amen. I thought she was still away, but she's here. Praise God. Amen. 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 And if you've been away and this is your, your, your back, we give God thanks and praise for you. Amen. Amen. Because all of you are doing some great works out in the community. Amen. This isn't just a first church thing, but um, it's a community, God's community, uh, feel that we're in, that we're planting in. Amen. And uh, listen, we're reaping. We're just not growing, but we're also reaping. Amen. Amen? Amen? Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before your holy presence this morning. Jesus. Jesus. Because there's just something about your name your master, your savior, your Jesus. Like the flower, the beautiful flowers after the rain. Jesus. Your Jesus. And we're so thankful for that because Lord God, you lay us down at night, but in the morning, you wake us up. And yesterday, someone said to me, you're an on-time God. And you are an on-time God. And even when we hesitate, and sometimes we lag behind, the blessing you had in store for us, you still give it to us. What an on-time God you are. Oh, we just praise you today. We bow before you. I can't help but say that we bow before you because, Lord God, when I wake up in the morning, I bow before you. My head bows, and, Lord, if I can get on my knees, my knees bow. And then you get me ready for the day as you get all of us ready for the day, oh God. You blessed us so that we are able to be a blessing to someone else. You are Jesus. King and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's just something about your name. Praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, coming into work is a good ride, and I get happy. Sometimes I'm glad the, car, the cops are not nowhere around. Because my hands are clapping and I know where they're supposed to be. But I've got a pilot that makes sure that everything is all right. Amen? And I give God thanks and pray. Listen, don't y'all don't do that. Don't do what I do. And I shouldn't have said that, but I, I just get happy. I, I have my music on. And when I get up to do worship in the morning, because I'm a worshiper. And when I worship in the morning in my devotion, sometimes the music gets so good, I want to send it to everybody. Because it's good. And it's good to, to have the flavor. <laughs> it's good to have the blessing of God in your life. So you start your day out knowing that there's no one like him. Amen? Amen. And then I get on the prayer line. Praise the Lord. And then I get blessed some more. Amen. And everything we do, we get blessed some more. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And I just want to talk to you. You heard the scripture very eloquently read in Matthew this morning uh, about the Father's will. I just want to talk to you a few seconds about that. I'm not going to be very long, I promise you. I just want to talk to you about His will. His will. And... I'm going to use my grandkids, if you don't mind, because I can't use yours because I don't know all the patterns of your kids. If I knew them, I would use them. But I want you all to remember the story that was read. Remember the ruckus in the fellowship hall, the story about the ruckus in the fellowship hall? You know, don't you? 
when Jesus walked in and he turned over all the tables Amen. at the bazaar. Amen. Folks were selling and they were gambling. Mm -hmm. Y'all go ahead and raffle in God's church. You're gambling. They were selling and they were raffling and, and, and they were whispering and having all kinds of chit chat, had animals in the house of God. They were doing what they wanted to do at Bazaar. You heard the word, Bazaar. Well, you know what happened, don't you? Jesus got mad. And I don't have to tell you the rest because you know it. Well, he went outside and he was sitting on the front step of the church and a bunch of people, like they always do, gathered around Jesus. They came and they sat around him. And he was telling them about the kingdom of God and you, all, you know all that good stuff that Jesus talk about, don't you? Well, one of the associate preachers and a few of the lay servants <coughs> came up and began asking questions. Amen. Excuse me, Jesus, do you have a permit to hold a Sunday school class here? Mm -hmm. Who gave you permission to start a new Bible study? And one of the CLMs interjected, you know better than that, Jesus. Has your curriculum been approved by the Sunday School Board. And did you bother checking with the Church Administrative Board? Uh, furthermore, did you look at the discipline to make sure it agrees with your kind of teaching? And Jesus said, well, what about John the Baptist? He didn't have a discipline. He didn't have any boards. Who gave him permission to teach? It weren't no Sunday school boards back then. It wasn't the church administrative board. It wasn't the commission on education. So it was either God or he was just talking through his hat. Amen. Oh, the preacher and the lay servants put their head together. They said, okay, he got us there. Well, let's come up with something else. If we say from God they went, then he will say, why didn't you agree with him? And then, every fly-by-night self-star prophecy, y'all better watch who you're looking at on TV and who you're listening to, amen? People come over your life, praying over your life and tell you they're apostles and, oh, let me shut up. Right, but anyway, y'all know what I'm saying. Folks have no authority but the authority of Jesus Christ. John had authority from God the Father. Jesus reminded them that if you're like John, if you're like John, you stop complaining about the church and you go ahead and pay up your pledge. Nobody said amen. You all get it on your way home. If you're like John, you stop complaining about the church and you begin to do your part. If you're like John, you stop finding faults with the church and look within. If you're like John, you stop complaining and blaming everybody else. But who's looking at you back in the mirror? And finally, somebody finally said, well, we're going to have to check that out, Jesus. So Jesus said something like this. Once there was a man who had two sons. I happen to have four grandsons. He went to the first one's bedroom. This is always Andrew. And he stuck his head in the door. And the boys are playing a video game, Modern 21. That's him. That's the new. He's got it, honey. If it comes out, he, yeah. And he was playing his video game. And his dad interrupted him and said, Andrew, I, I need you to go outside and help clean the garage out because it really needs some attention. And I'm so busy working, I just don't have time. 
And Andrew looked at him and he thought about it and he said, well, Dad, I'm playing this game and i got to get to the end because I want to get to the first tier of it. I want to be master of this game. And he was looking and he was playing and, and finally it hit them. He said, well, you know what? Dad is providing a roof over my head. What? He's providing food for me. They give me clothes. I guess I can. And they even bought me this game, which they shouldn't have. <laughs> and he said, well, I guess I can get up and go and clean the garage out for Dad. But then he stuck his head in Aaron's room. And I love Aaron because Aaron, this is Aaron's answer for real. And his father said to him, Aaron, I need you to go outside and I need you to mow the lawn for me. I need some help. And Aaron will say, well, you know, I can't do that because I'm studying to be a preacher. That is always his answer for everything. I'm reading the Bible. I'm studying to be a preacher. Come on, a 14-year-old going to talk. He always used that because he figured if he used the Bible, you're going to leave him alone. Amen? So his father said, well, I don't think God will mind you putting the Bible down and helping your daddy out. And Aaron thought about it after his father left. He said, I've got all these allergies. If I go outside and cut the lawn, I'm going to start my allergy up. And my hand's going to hurt and I'm going to get tired and the sun is too hot and I ain't doing it. When he finished the story, Jesus asked the crowd, he said, which son did the father's will? Which one did the Father's will? Well, everyone could see it was the first one because he stopped and thought about it. Even though he said he wouldn't, he had a chance to change a part in the end, and he did the right thing what his father asked. But the other son, Aaron, just gave the father lip service. I'm telling y'all, he gave him lip service and didn't really obey so. Jesus looked at the preacher and the deacons and the and lay speakers and all those officials, we call them in whatever church we're in, and he said, you see some of the people you call sinners are entering the kingdom ahead of you. Some of the ones that you have doubt in are entering the kingdom ahead of you. You see, because you're doubting them. While we would think Andrew would sit there and play games all day, he finally thought about it. He said, I ought to do something about this. Amen? Because you did not pay attention to John, but some of these so-called sinners did. It's clear that Jesus was talking about the chief priests and the elders and the little story. So you see, it was the job of the elders and priests to teach the people about God's will. Amen. Amen? Amen. God said we should live a life. We should live a life. No matter who you are, that folks will see Jesus living in you. Yes. Amen? Amen? You should live a life that you don't panic about stuff because folks see your calmness and they see Jesus in you the Nazareth teacher the one that went into the temple of the most holy and we sinners was destroying God's house better be careful what we do in God's house who was Jesus somebody asked you and I know he was the son of God amen he had every right to teach in the temples or anywhere else he wanted to. No one had the right to put him out of the temple. Amen? Amen? His authority was not from man, but it was from God. The question was, where was their authority? Where is your authority from? Where is mine from? So Jesus told a story about a son who did the father's will, despite refusing at first, and a son who simply paid the father lip service. I'm reading the Bible. The crowd were turning from sin to do God's will. The religious leaders, on the other hand, were just giving God lip service. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. 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 Some of us come to church, and this is not to insult anybody. I just need you to look at your heart. We come to church, and we have our Bible and joke. But do we just have a Bible and tote on Sunday morning for an hour and a half? 
Or do we get up in the morning and we look at the scriptures or before we go at night? Do you have anything upstairs that when something attacks you in the daytime, you can count on that? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Which all begs the question, are you doing the Father's will? Which son are you? Which son am I? We all rebel from time to time like the first son. We would rather play video games all day than roll up our sleeves and clean the mess up in the world. We would rather look at the soaps on TV than come to the church and answer the phone for one hour. Oh, did I say that? We would rather we would rather look at the housewives than call someone up and say, how are you doing? We get upset because Nene is not coming back to the housewives of Atlanta. We get upset when we don't see folks in church. Amen? We ought to pick the things that we worship. And when we worship the real and living God that's within us, we begin to wonder and care more about the church atmosphere. Do we live outside the church or are we the church? Say that again. Do we live outside the church or are we the church? I'm the church, you're the church. The church is made up of people, and we are the church. The church is not a building. We are the church. And I want to see us begin to act like we are the church. I want to see us begin to care more about each other. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Jesus is just being practical here. It's not what you say originally intend to do that matters. The question is, is what you do in the end. What you're going to do in the end. One of the churches I pastor, the lady that read the announcement every Sunday, she always reminds folks that it's only what you do for Christ will last. She never stopped saying that. And I was so happy every time she said, it's only what you do for Christ will last because I wanted to sink in. It's only what you do for Christ will last. When you when your committee's meeting and you don't show up for the meeting, it's only what you do for Christ will last. It's not your name on a piece of paper and you do nothing about it. It's only what you do for Christ is, will last. It's not your name just there, but it's you actually being a part of the body of Christ. This is just not a throw me out there question. This question demands an answer. Are you giving lip service? Are you serious about your faith? Do you seek to do the Father's will? Or are you just saying it to make me hear you say it? He demands us to do his will. And this question demands an answer. I don't need the answer. But you need the answer. Amen? You give the answer to this question this morning after you leave church. And then tomorrow and the day after and the day after. How will you live your life? How will you answer this question? Will you continue to play games? Amen. Or will you get serious about being a part of the body of Christ? Don't you know God loves you? Aren't you glad he loves you? Aren't you glad he loves you? Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Friday morning. You know, sometimes you hear stories and you put yourself in that place. And a lot of women can identify with this. Friday morning I heard of someone who was going in the hospital have a double mastectomy. 
And all of us, we women will go, mm, and some of you men will go, mm. We have no idea how that might feel. We might imagine. But I can't imagine. I can't even imagine. Can you believe? Because that's so hard. But what I can do is pray. And that's what we did. We prayed. And I want to continue to pray. Yesterday I spoke with Sue's sister. And Sue is home and she's doing a little bit better. But she needs some help. Are we just giving lip service? Are we willing to help a sister? Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I heard about someone that I care about. Learned that she had cancer. And several days after she learned she had cancer, she got sick and went into the hospital. I think her treatment starts on Monday. And I wish for all the names I just mentioned and know about, I wish that I could touch them and heal them. I wish that. But there comes time in my life where I believe I can touch in the name of Jesus and healing starts. And when I feel that, I begin to pray. And so this morning, the ones I mentioned, I am touching right now in the name of Jesus. Aren't you glad that he's an on-time God and he's an everywhere God? No matter where you are, he's there with you. If you're in the Carolinas looking at us, he's there with you. If you're at the airport looking at us, he's there with you. Right now, I just feel the presence of God within all of us and within me, that we can call upon the name of Jesus and healing will begin. Do you believe that with me this morning? In the name of Jesus, we're calling on healing. Wherever you are right now, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand, raise your hands towards heaven. And together we're going to pray. Together we're going to pray. We, we, had a, we had an employee at First Church that when we say prayer, no matter who we ask to pray, she began to pray also. And so I'm asking all of you, let us pray now. For two minutes, we're going to pray one for another. Keeping those names we called in mind. Asking God for his healing presence right now to be with us. And so gracious God, right now in the name of Jesus, you heard the names that were called. Zena's mother, oh God, who is in her 90s. And then, oh God, Kevin's mother, <laughs> who came to church last week in the name of Jesus. All of our mothers and our grandmothers, her aunties and her uncles and our friends, oh God, we're praying for right now. I ask, oh God, right now, we will just touch Sue and Rick so they begin to heal in the name of Jesus. I pray for Renee, that cancer will disappear. I pray, oh God, for a cousin who will hold it together because you've got her mind, her heart, and her spirit. I pray, oh God, that the love of Jesus will come through. Those who I can't see because you're, this is virtual, oh God, we're still praying for you. Whatever might ail you this morning, we pray. If there's hypertension, we're praying, oh God, that it will be lower. If it's sugar, oh God, diabetes, we're praying, oh God that you will sustain. If you have kidney problem this morning, oh God, we're praying in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, that God's will will be done and healing will take place in your life. Lord God, we love you. We love you so much. We love you so much, oh God. But no matter how much we love you, we realize that you love us even more. So we give you thanks and praise. We ask, oh God, that as your healing presence go out this morning. In the name of Jesus, 
because healing is being done. We will give you honor, praise, and glory. And God, we pray for Stephanie's mother. She just came back from seeing her mother. And I know her mother is missing her right now. But it's your love that keeps them, no matter how far apart, that keeps them together. Hallelujah. We give you praise and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. And amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We did it. Lord. You're always great. You're always so merciful. As we leave this place today, oh God, I might not have called all the names I needed to call, but you know my heart, I try to keep it right. I try to make sure it's right. You know this heart. You know the love I hold for all your people. And the love I hold especially for the people of First Church. Lord God, that love will live with me forever and ever, as long as I'm on this earth. But I pray this morning, God, that you'll hold us together. You sanctify us and you keep us alive, always willing to do your will. Thank you for the men who come out early in the morning to set up the tents and the chairs of oh God. Thank you for Peter. Thank you for Kevin and Nick, oh God, and Dippo, Lord. And thank you for Zena and thank you for Perry in the name of Jesus. And if I miss your name, it's not because I didn't want to call your name. It's a head thing. Hallelujah. She's getting a little bit older. And she realized it, amen. But you're in my heart. Amen. You're in my heart. Now my people go in peace. I'm sorry, lay speakers. It's all right. CLMs. You know, <laughs> employs the first church. My people go in peace knowing that God will never leave you or forsake you. Knowing that his love is steadfast and this is a journey we're on together, not separate. Lord God, we thank you that we almost have charge conference wrapped up. Almost. But we'll get it together by the first. We give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Love y'all. God bless you. Thank you.